Okay, we're going to prove that there's an infinite amount of prime numbers. So before we prove that, let's have a look at, um, well, I suppose, the main idea that we're going to use in that proof. So if you remember the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which says that every, I have it here, every, um, where is it? Every, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that every whole number is either prime or can be made from a unique product of prime numbers. So if we take the number 20, 20 is equal to 2 by 2 by 5, 12 is 2 by 2 by 3. Um, so we can we can make up any any number that's not a prime number by multiplying prime numbers together. So say if we take I don't know a, long, a number like twenty. So twenty is equal to two by two by five, and if <coughs> that means that the number two is a factor of twenty and the number five is a factor of twenty, I can divide two into twenty, or I can divide five into twenty, or if I take the number twelve which is 2 by 2 by 3. That's the prime factorization. This is called the prime factorization of 12. That means that 2 is a factor of 12. I can divide 2 into 12, or I can divide the prime number 3 into 12. OK, so we're going to, we're going to use that idea. And one other idea, actually, if, say if I, um, if I take the number, ooh, if I take this number 12, and if I add 1 to 12, so to add 1 to 12 and I get 13, I can't divide 2 into 13 or I can't divide 3 into 13. But if I take the number 12 and if I add 2 to it, I get 14. I can divide 2 into 14. I can't divide 3 into 14. But if I took the number 12 and if I added 3 to it, I'd get 15. And I can divide 3 or into 15. So you kind of keep that in mind as we're doing the proof. We'll come back to it. So, OK, let's prove that there's an infinite amount of prime numbers. So we're going to use a proof by contradiction. And you should be able to guess or well, to know what the first bit of a proof by contradiction is now anyway. So we have a proof by contradiction. We have our assumption. So we're going to assume the opposite. That there is an opposite of infinite is a finite, a finite amount of primes. So what does that mean? Well, if there's a finite amount of primes, then that must mean that there's a last prime. So we're going to let, let's say, we don't know what it is, but let's say let P be the last prime. So P is the last prime, whatever that is. OK, let's make, let's make a number. Let's multiply all of the primes together. So let's say x is that number. So x is the number where we multiply every single prime together. So the first prime is 2, second prime is 3, then we got 5. So x is the number 2 by 3 by 5 by 7 by all the way up to the very last prime, which is p. So if we think about this number x, the same as we had here, 20. 20 is a number. I can divide 20 by 2, and I can divide 20 by 5. I can divide 12 by 2 or by 3 because I can make up the number 12 by multiplying 2 by 2 by 3. So if I take this number x, which we made by multiplying all of the primes, I can divide x by 2. 2 goes in evenly into x. 3 goes in evenly into x. 7 goes in evenly into x. And p, this, the very last prime, goes in evenly into x. So let's make another number. Let's add 1 to x. So say we go x plus 1 would be the number. And it's just going to be this same number, except we're going to add 1. So 2 by 3 by 5 by 7 by all the way up to multiplied by p, and then plus 1 at the very end of it. OK, let's have a think about this number. Well, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that every number is either prime or can be made by a unique product of prime numbers. So is it possible, to, what about this number here, x plus 1? Is it possible to make this number? by multiplying prime numbers together. And I can ask the same question. I can say, well, is this number here divisible by any primes? So is it divisible? Is the number x is divisible by 2? Because I can, to make up the number x, I'm multiplying 2 by 3 by 5 by 7. So I can, all of these numbers here, divide into x. But 2 won't divide into x plus 1, because I only added an extra 1. If you remember when I, what I was doing over here, 2 divides into 12, but if I add 1 to 12, I get 13. 2 won't divide into 13. In order to make 2 divide into, well, I have to add 2 to 12, and I get 14, because so 2 will divide into 14. In order to get the next number that 3 will divide into, I have to add 3. So 3 will divide into 12 plus 3, which is 15. So 
two dead. I only added one, so two won't divide into this number here. Three won't divide into it because I didn't add three. I only added one. Five won't divide into it because I only added one. P won't divide into it because I only added one. So if no prime numbers divide into this number, then that must mean that this number is a prime number. So we've assumed that there's a finite amount of primes, but we've made a contradiction there because we've made a bigger prime. We said that P was the last prime, let P be the last prime number. And here we made a new number. We made a new number where we multiplied every single prime together, two by three by five by seven by all the way up to P and then added one. So this is this number here, X plus one is a new prime number. So we have our contradiction as we said that P was the last prime, or the big, yeah, the last or the biggest prime. But we made a bigger prime, X plus one. So that's a contradiction. So that must mean, therefore, there is an infinite number of prime numbers, numbers. This, this proof actually, incidentally, was done by one of the most famous mathematicians ever called Euclid, E-U-C-L-I-D.